It seems like a requirement for people on this platform to make a little robot turret. Obviously, I intend to carry on this noble tradition. I went and bought a pile of electronics again. I figured I should learn how to use stepper motors, so these are staying. The microcontrollers are all going into the microcontroller box. Okay, stepper motors. They spin. I know these are brushless DC motors that are supposed to be super accurate. A DC motor is comprised of two separate parts, the rotor and the stator. The rotor rotates and the stator is stationary. The great thing about brushless motors is that these two pieces don't actually touch each other, except at the axle bearing. The rotor isn't driven through any kind of physical contact. It uses the magic of electromagnetism. If you have a magnetic field and you place inside of it a ferromagnetic material, like iron, the field permeates the iron and pulls all the little atomic magnetic moments and magnetic domains into alignment. This turns the material into a temporary magnet with opposing polarities. These two poles then experience an attractive force, F equals K, P1, P2 over D squared, which can be calculated using... Oof. I started looking into it, then I kind of ran out of energy and spaced out for a bit. Where was I? Right. Stepper motors have these little teeth on both the electromagnets on the stator and on the iron rotor, all slightly offset from each other. You pulse one electromagnet on, and it pulls the rotor into alignment with itself, generating a small step in the motor's rotation. Basically, if I drive this sequence into the motor, it will rotate. Reverse the sequence, reverse the direction of rotation. Sweet. I wrote some code on my trusty old Arduino Mega, and after a bit of tinkering, voila! The motors will move in response to these commands sent out through the serial port. Here are a bunch of 3D printed parts, not you, which, after assembling, create a turret-looking contraption. Now you may be wondering what this piece is for. I'm not going to sink so low as to put a laser on here, nor am I going to use any old microcontroller. This is for an ESP32, specifically the version with a camera. This little device has both a camera module and a Wi-Fi antenna meaning it can take video and then stream it to any computer on the Wi-Fi network. The best part? I don't even have to do any code. If you add the board-specific libraries to the Arduino IDE, you can load the camera web server example onto the board. Boom. Video. That said, I do need to make some modifications. Namely, I want to add my stepper code and control the motors from this website a website that's hosted on the microcontroller itself. Thankfully, again, it's not that complicated relative to what I expected. All I need to do is take this compressed HTML, g-unzip it, then modify it by copying the switch code and add a few more input fields. This should get caught by the event handler, so I just need to go into the interrupt routine and then add the cases to the code. After spending a few hours debugging, I have a working turret. Yippee. I just gotta do one last thing, and I'm freed from my power supply. Now, why am I using a bunch of batteries and a voltage regulator instead of this little setup of a lithium battery and battery controller? Quite frankly, these things worry me a little bit. This guy even had his explode in the middle of the night, and I don't wanna burn down the apartment. So what makes these dangerous? Well, for starters, lithium batteries contain a bunch of, well, lithium. Lithium is a member of the alkali metals, which have low ionization energy, among other things. A chemist will tell you that these materials are highly reactive and under certain conditions, volatile. You go ask an engineer to translate, and he'll tell you that they'll likely explode unless you treat them right. Fun stuff. No. Point being, designing these controllers is a bit of an art in and of itself, 
So I'm not going to fool around with this cheap stuff until I study up a bit and can assess the circuits for myself. Now I could print out a box and shove all this stuff into it, but I have some issues with this design. Why on earth did I put the motors on the base and the controller on the turret? Anyway, it's not like I plan to build a bunch of these and make my own intranet-based camera security system. And if I was, servos would probably be a better choice. Must. Resist. Oh no.